Coronation Street's Rob Mallard will be attending the BAFTAs next month, although, as it's a virtual ceremony, he'll be in his own living room, like everyone else. It's the heartbreaking scenes of Daniel saying his final goodbyes to Sinead that have been nominated in the must-see moment of the year category. And after months of watching Daniel wrestle with grief, it seems he may be, may be about to find some happiness. Oh, what a cutie. Hey. Sorry, I've got no boundaries, everyone's always saying. That's okay. Is he yours? Yeah, yeah, Bertie. Bertie? Amazing name. Thanks. So how can you mope in here on your own instead of at home with Bertie and his mum? Oh, well, Bertie's mum's not around anymore. Ah, oh, crikey, I'm sorry. Put my foot in it again. See? No boundaries. Hey. I don't even know your name. Daniel. Nicky. Well, Rob Mallard joins me now. Rob, it is so lovely to see you. It really is. So there he is. There's Daniel trying to rebuild his life. Nicky looks very nice. Um, here's hoping things go quite well for him. Yeah, well, good morning. Um, yeah, I hope so. You'd like a little bit of nice stuff to happen to him. He's had, he's had a bit of a tough year of it. Just a bit. What a year it's been. I mean, you've been through such a lot, that character. It's been incredible. We had, obviously, the BAFTA-nominated death of Sinead and the disaster with Bethany and all of that. I was really interested to hear that you kept perfume that Katie, who played Sinead, you kept perfume that she used just to kind of remind you if you needed to be reminded of that storyline? Yeah, well, we both had one. In the bureau at the back of our set, in the drawer, there was two two bottles of perfume. And so one was for a guy, one was for a girl, and we started using them. And then once she died, it was still there, so I could use it every now. Because I had to do some scenes where I had to be found holding her clothes and just uh, generally mourning her loss, basically. And it was easier to do that with the, with the perfume added to it. It's just a cheat, really. No, it's a really good idea because, obviously, you know... The, we all know that sense of smell really resonates and it brings you back to a place that you've been before. Really hard, those scenes to play, because you had to get it absolutely right, because people are going through that, sadly. You know, people people do go through this this loss. Um, quite a challenge, quite a challenge, but a remarkable um, achievement in getting the BAFTA nomination. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, I mean, there was... Obviously, what you end up seeing on screen is me and Katie, but within that unit within those couple of episodes it was a small core cast and crew and it really was a team thing it was it was a group effort that we managed to get 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 on on camera what we managed to get on camera but then later on down the line it's me and Katie that seemed to get all of the um what's it, all the praise and all the gloss and stuff but there are a lot of people behind the scenes that helped Mike Lacey and you know, oh. Ellen Taylor, who wrote the script, they were just, all of it, fantastic. It all came together really nicely. Well, that's the play. thing. Yeah, that's the thing about Coronation Street. They always do the research, the writing is always spot on. I know you worked with charities like Mummy Star, things like that, just to just to make sure that it was authentic, because it, it had to be, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, Mummy Star, they, they, they've been working with Coronation Street from the very beginning on this storyline. Um, and Pete Walrath, who's the uh, CEO of Mummy Star, it's his story that it was based on. Um, it was his wife that died. Um, so I was basically playing him for the, well, the sort of genesis of the character. I was playing, I was playing him. Obviously, Coronation Street took a load of license and took the characters in different directions because you've got to to add you know layers of drama and to stretch it out over over a period of time and he was just so forthcoming with all of the details of what it was like to be in that situation just really honest and um it's heartbreaking so we had a lot of raw material to go on a lot of raw material so which which obviously helps you and, and it helps you to get that that character to make that character so believable as it was now look lockdown are you by yourself? And if you are by yourself, is that actually quite nice? Do you know what? I'm actually quite a hermit by nature. I am. So I, I said to my mum when she rang me up a weekend, she said, how's lockdown treating you? I said, I didn't realise that my lifestyle was called lockdown. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's been all right. There's been uh, really, really happy moments and then some really, really sad moments. I think everyone's been on a bit of a roller coaster with this thing. Just ready for it to be over now. We'll go back to the pub. I know, I know, I know, that's what I'm saying to folks. We want to go back to the pub so we can stop drinking as much. Yeah, exactly. 
true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's I know. So I know you miss your mum. I know you miss your family, and you really miss your granny as well. Yeah, my my ninety two. Well, gosh, she's not going to. She's not going to thank me for saying that. Because what she does, she is ninety two. But what she does is she flips it round, so she's twenty nine at the minute. Ah, that's very um, nice. <laughs> I but like yeah, she. I mean, you, you asked me if I'm living by myself. Look at her go. She's like, say, 29. <laughs> um, lives by herself. Cooks for herself. You know. I mean, obviously we help her. We've not just like left her out there. But um, yeah, look at her go. Look that at her go. At fantastic. Nice. Fantastic. That generation are remarkable. They really are. Now, look. How are you doing? I know you've talked about this before. You've got this condition. It's called a tremor. And interestingly, yeah. we had Julian Fellows on. You, the man who wrote Downton, and he suffers yeah. from the same sort of thing. And yeah, not that's... not enough people know about this i mean does it impact on your life greatly or have you just learned to to live with it it's yeah i'm not gonna lie it, it does as the older i get it does have more of an impact because it's a progressive disease um you I, I, really i consider myself lucky because it's in the same disease family as uh, parkinson's and motor neurons so if I, if I was going to get any of them, I'd rather have the one that I've got because it, it's the least debilitating over time. But um, you just got to manage it. I mean, uh, like I do at work, we, we get around it in various ways. Um, and, yeah, Julian Fellows has got it. I think he wrote a character in Downton that basically had it as well. Yes. I, was, I was supposed to be before all of this uh, lockdown and the brave new world that we're living in now with coronavirus, before all this kicked in. I was supposed to be going and joining the conference, the National Tremor Conference, to maybe start a conversation about this. But hopefully, hopefully after after the lockdown's ended, we can get back to that. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. And I need to ask you, I know we've, we've mentioned that Coronation Street up for BAFTA, uh, but you can't get dressed. Are you going to get dressed up that night? Are you going to put your tuxedo on and sit with a glass of champagne and pretend that you're at a party? Well Yes, yeah. What, what would you do? I mean, because I think we we'll probably have the same answer. I'm, I'm thinking dress from the waist up. Yes. But yeah. with, with something on below the waist. I mean, we'll put our pants on, shall we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I must clarify, I have got something on down there now. Whilst... <laughs> Good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. But yeah, I but think you could do that. Champagne. But, but, champagne. but you know what? It would be nice for all of you. Like, maybe you could do a wee Zoom chat or something. All of the cast, as many of the cast yeah. and crew and writers and producers and all that, and get a massive, massive Zoom chat and all be dressed up from the waist up. That's exactly right. I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. That's what we need to do. Oh, I, I really wish you all the best. I really do. And obviously, it's going to be the 60th anniversary of Cory, and we need, to, we need to mark that. That is proper. Yeah. yeah but a, a BAFTA for the 60th anniversary, that wouldn't be too bad, would it? That would be rather lovely. It really would. Have you seen who we're, we're up against, though? Have you seen who we're up against? Fleabag, Line of Duty, Game of Thrones... Love Island. Oh, I think I'm forgetting somebody else there. Oops. I know, I know, I know. But I think I think all of you should get the award, to be honest. They're all fantastic shows. They really are. Good luck with that. Good luck with everything that you do. And obviously being back at work, which is great, because I know you've missed everybody. Lovely to yeah. talk to you, darling. Thank you so much. Nice to talk to Thank you, Lorraine. See you later. Bye. And Coronation Street, of course, continues tomorrow, 7.30 on ITV.